Well, God bless you beautiful people on Facebook and YouTube. Blessings to your family this morning. We give honor to God this morning. If I can get five people just to say, Lord, we thank you this morning. While we slept in slender, nothing happened to us and we got up in our right mind. My God, did you get up this morning fresh this morning? This is Tuesday, my God. We have made it through Monday and this is Tuesday. Go in that job with a good attitude, especially if you're a Christian person, that you need to show that you are an image of Jesus Christ. Do that make sense? Well, you know, for the last couple of days, we've been talking about marriages. We've been talking about sex. We've been talking about uh, making the romance better in the, in the home for the married people. Uh, today, I want to talk about a little bit about the virgins and, and girls that's waiting on her husband and how you should be patient and how you should be getting your life together. God is not going to bring you too much anything. Uh, just for instance, if you, oh, I need a new car. But the other car that you're driving now, it haven't been cleaned out. You haven't changed the oil in it. Uh, when you go inside the car, it smells like uh, last week's garbage truck. Uh, you got bags in there from uh, the golden arches from McDonald's. Uh, so God is not going to give us anything if he see you're not taking care of what you have. Do that make sense? One thing about God, he's not going to put more on you than you can bear. So you have to understand that's scripture. So God won't give you nothing if he don't figure that you're ready to handle it because he won't do you like that. He prepares you through the word of God. He prepares you, get you ready for life. Husbands should be, uh, young men should be getting ready for their wives. This is biblically how it was set up. Even though I know I sound like an old fool uh, talking about there should be virgins and all that there, but I'm talking to the ones that are virgin. Let me tell you, sister, something. You wait and you be patient. Get your life right. Uh, I can almost freestyle this. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even have to go no scripture on this because God wants you to get your life ready and start preparing for your life before he bring you a husband or before he bring you a wife. Men should be preparing. Even if you, I raise my right hand, if you can't find yours, I'm always prepared, even if God do uh, send me a wife or some wife come through my path and, and I holler at her. I have to be ready to know that getting in that woman's life, that I'll be an asset, not a liability. And that's what I'm looking out of her. I'm looking for her to be a, a asset, not a liability. And that's what you have to do. And dating is what you get all your notes, take all your notes. Now, a guy is good. And uh, sorry, brother, I don't mean to knock you off your game, but brothers is good in acting until they get what they want. So the game, the best way, I don't like to call it a game because it's life, but at the same time, you have to be careful about a guy that's trying to get you in the bed real fast. Then you'll lose uh, your best tool to help you guide him in, into the way he need to be if you act too fast on that. God intended it for you to be mar uh, married um, uh, before you have sex. And I know that don't sound right, but it just keeps so many things out of your life. I know several girls now that's virgins that's close around me that got beautiful homes, they got cars, they got good jobs, uh, they're flowing in the community, they uh, got a church life, and they're not gay. They're not lesbian. And there is some guys that's doing well. We don't talk about them because guys that's doing well, the same way with a young lady that's doing well, we never talk about them. But this parable I want to talk about real quick today, I want to talk about the ten virgins in the Bible. Now what I got out of it and what I pull out is God is telling uh, the young ladies to be prepared, to be ready. Five of them was prepared and the other ones they said five, it was five fools. So the five fools, meaning that they're doing anything, uh, you, could, you could turn it where they're doing anything, they're not prepared, they're not ready. But these ten virgins was chosen. In back biblical day, they would pick out ten virgins and have all ten of them go to where the bridegroom was. But they would have to camp outside of where he lodged. And then some woman would come out there uh, uh, out of the night and say, Bridegroom! bridegroom 
and then the girls would get up, get dressed, or, or, or start getting dressed to get ready to go to go in through the gate. Well, in this parable, the five that was fools did not prepare. They didn't know how to cook. They didn't know how to do laundry. They, they didn't, uh, come on somebody, uh, they didn't know how to be nice to a man. They didn't know how to talk to a man. Uh, only thing they uh, wanted to do is, is be fools and not prepared, not getting ready. And this is what I took out of this to let you know that God is saying, I need you to be virgins getting into marriage. I'll send you a Boaz. Boaz in the Bible was considered a very wealthy man. It was a story of Naomi and Ruth. When Ruth lost her husband and Oprah lost her husband and Naomi lost her husband, which her husband was the two sons that was married to her two daughter-in-laws. Well, Ruth decided to go on with Naomi and she told her, you can quote me, she said, wherever you go, I'll go. What you eat, I'll eat. And this God that you know, I want to know him. And that's where she got blessed. When she said, I want to know some God. Now, the scripture we can go off is Matthew 6, 33. And it says this, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all your desires shall come. Not might, not maybe, but shall come. So let me read this in your hearing so you don't look at me funny. Uh, let's go to, we could be coming out of Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. Now, the, bar the parable of the ten virgins is also known as the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins, or the parable of the ten bridesmaids. The parable of Jesus, according to Matthew 25, 1 through 13, ten virgins awaits as the bridegroom five have brought enough oil for their lamps and for the weight, for the weight, underlined for the weight. Why the oil of the other five ran out, and the five virgins who prepared for the bridegroom arrived and were awarded, while the five who waited, who went to buy future oil, missed the bridegroom arrival and are considered, my God, disowned. So, this parable in here, the meat and the potatoes that I dig out of here is that God is telling us that you need to prepare. Sisters need to prepare. You need to prepare for your husband. You need to be getting your life together. Uh, there's things you need to do as a single woman, a single man. Travel the world. Just to give a few points. Travel the world. Uh, date. Dating is the best way. And while you're dating, learn how to uh, end relationships. See, we don't practice that. We practice on trying to keep them. But everybody that comes in your life is not supposed to be in your life for a lifetime. It's a season. It's a experience. It's a challenge sometimes. So what you have to learn how to do is say, you know what? I We've been dating for about a month now. And I just see that it's going the wrong way. And uh, I just think that I'm going I'm to go back to school and uh, I'm, uh, get closer to God. And I, I'm just going to do my thing and you do your thing. So you have to learn how to break up. Isn't that good news? You don't need to just learn how to try to keep it. You need to learn how to tell people that it's over. Because you're, you're not doing uh, what what I want to happen as a man. Number one, you're selling drugs. I can't, I can't deal with you with that. Because you'll add me into some trouble. Uh, I don't know who you beefing with. I don't know who you sold to last night. So I don't want that to come into my life. You know, it just seems like you want sex. That's all you talk about is me and you doing it. So sisters, that's virgin, hold yourself. I'm telling you, you have a gift. That's a gift from God. And then you feel good when you're giving that only to your husband. It's terrible when you got to change tattoos that's on your backside because you land with so many people. Your backside look like a chalkboard. So we have to be so careful about ha uh, having sex all over the place uh, and not waiting on your husband, Do they, if that makes sense. So this scripture right here lets us know that you need to be preparing. Can you cook? That's, that's number one. You should be taking cooking class or asking your mom. 
asking your dad, how do you cook this? Uh, you're a young woman now. You're 25 years old. You're, you're a virgin. You need to learn how to cook. Uh, how to how to wash dishes, how to do laundry. Uh, come on, you have to get ready for that man if you ask him for a man. You cannot have a girlfriend's mentality and then be asking God for a wife. You just can't do that. You hear what I'm saying? You cannot ask God for a house if you're struggling paying your rent for your apartment because God is not going to do that to you. He's not going to give you any more than you can bear. And he says that in his word. He know what you can handle. So you ask in uh, the myth, oh, I want a million dollars. What for? You can't figure out what to do with that $380 you get each week. You blow that off. You ain't paying your bills with that. You're behind in that. So why would God bless you with more? So you can have more stuff so you can show people how you are and how you look and what you drive. That is not the way you get stuff from God. First, The first prayer that people need to pray is the prayer that... Uh, uh, who was it that I loved him? Solomon. When God asked Solomon, what do you want from me? God said, it, it, Solomon said, oh, if I can just learn to, uh, to get your people to come to you. And God granted him. And Solomon was one of the richest men in the Bible. So what are you saying, Pastor? Be patient. Wait. Get your life together. Then God will bring you what you want. Because he'll be watching what you do for what you already have. Do that make sense? But listen, you guys out there that's virgins, men and women, don't worry about what people say because the world is pulling against that because there's not that many virgins anymore. They're having sex at 10, 11 years old now, early, early, early. And that's messing our generations up because you cannot have half a husband and half a wife raising half a kids. So that don't work. You got to have a whole husband and a whole wife with some whole children to make God be proud of that family. Did that make sense? Well, I love you all. I know it was a little short word, but just I'm just letting you know, if you're virgin with sisters out there, listen, don't let nobody try to tempt you. Don't let your girlfriend sick you on the guys that they know it is no good. And, and you be careful and guard yourself. Enjoy life. Uh, travel. Save some money. Get your credit right. Learn how to cook. Learn how to be respectful. Don't have no potty mouth that every word come out of your mouth, you're cussing. You are looking for a husband, so you believe me, God got you. Do that make sense? Well, I love you all. You guys be blessed out there, and you guys take care of yourself, and just let you know that I'm for you and not for the devil. So let's whoop the devil much as we can. Do that make sense? I love you all. Be blessed.